Hello, my name is Mark Scythian, uh, and the date today is July 25th, 2024. So this lecture is going to cover the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. And this lecture hopefully brings forth much ease to the viewer and the student alike because the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle is concerned with the inherent uncertainty or error of increasing the precision of testing a system. So if you have the latest and greatest test equipment, you are also inducing much more measurement error with respect to a particle's position and its momentum. So when we talk about a particle, in this case we could say that atoms are the purveyors of what is perceived as physical and biological material or materials. And so if we go into the quantum state of atoms or the subatomic states, we know a few input-output applications on the electron and proton feedback loop. And then there is the spin propagation and frequency. In other words, there's all these infinite probabilities of what amounts to just energy reaching quantum entanglement and then manifesting into what is perceived as a material or an elemental atomic state, the neutral state, the neutron state. So the input-output position and spin momentum is kind of like having this energetic machine spinning at the speed of light, sort of like a tornado spinning at the speed of light, but it's not physical, it is energetic. An energetic tornado. And then it reaches various entanglement probabilities to where a little matter discharges and it comes back to energy, little matter, you know. So, if we rewrite the Heisenberg uncertainty principle with respect to the Planck's constant, combining the Planck relationship with energy and frequency, we then get the uncertainty redefined as the uncertainty in position, delta x, uncertainty in momentum, delta p, which favors a greater than or equal to the ratio of the energy divided into the frequency times constant of four pi. So let's look at this just practically outside of the quantitative perspective. We could lead to a few of infinite applications, position and momentum of subatomic particles, infinite probabilities, uh, simultaneous existences. So one could be on a frequency resonating to a certain reality. However, that person could also exist in another probability as either a physical event or a energetic probability. Sort of like the information and the energy for that physicality and the physicality. However, it's at a different frequency. So it's not perceived by that individual in one certain timeline with respect to another. And of course, infinite timelines. Um, here's a big one I think many will appreciate is the testing induced error. So anytime you test a system, especially biological systems, because DNA is 75% bio photons or energetic matrices. In other words, 75% of DNA is not even physical, it is a molecule. However, if you're looking for all these physical states, you're only looking at the end result after you've made the error 
in the measurement and then you record it and say, this is the result, but it's wrong. So you ask the individual on a, I want to say, quote unquote, holistic level, which is more than the physical, but it is also the energetic. How do you feel? What do you think? What are you perceiving? You have total freedom on what you want to think. So all viewpoints are valid. There isn't one set determinist viewpoint. What could be a poison to one person is a cure to another. So when you set a criteria on a physicality as to what an outcome test is, you're already inducing the error. So when you make a test, as its precision increases, you're inducing error in the readings. And then a fraction of a moment afterwards, you record it. And you say, you have this, when you actually don't. So long-term observations prove this. There's all these people with all these different screenings and tests. And some of them say, no, thank you. I don't care about what will happen. I know my body. And 20 years later, they're healthy as a horse. And everybody who went for the treatments was made sick or killed by the treatments. So now they have a big liability. Well, where is this coming from? Well, any test that becomes invasive or too precise will alter the system data points, then record the result, and the result comes out in error. So testing induced error is a big, big practicality to actually share because many people who do watch videos may not be really interested in the entire STEM, mathematics, engineering, physics side, but what's the practicality? I feel this is an important video because if you get some result, it's not just in the medical world, it could be in anything. It is not set in stone. That uncertainty is a good thing. So you have the degrees of freedom to change your mindset or your set of access points and try something different to solve the problem. So uncertainty is good. It opens up the doors to try other plans or methods to solve your problem. But if you think a task by itself is etched in stone, then you're doing yourself a disservice because if you actually accept that, now you've changed your energetic frequency and exactly what you accept has a higher likely to manifest physically. So don't cheat yourself and accept the task of somebody else as in somebody who's not you. You know you, and if you don't, you should get to know you. So testing is subjective. Now, if we move on to very discrete limits, like you're building a bridge or you're making an alloy of metal, yes, there are tests, many of them non-invasive, or I would say not physical. You could measure the black body thermal radiation signature of let's say molten steel as it cools and reaches its annealed state and you are technically not altering the specimen but you are recording the energetic rates of change transducing them magnetically and then you can figure out the actual tempering ramp down temperature rate of change because you have not touched the specimen but you've picked up the energetic signatures and it becomes a relatively accurate test more like an observation more than a test but whenever things become invasive they already have altered the original specimen and then testing then becomes subjective and mostly an error so it's all up to you nobody's forcing you to undergo a test 
but don't think there's somebody else out there who is not you with your mindset, with your unique fingerprint, is not like you, is actually gonna have an answer for your problem. So uh, cause and effect, things do not just happen. You must be doing something to yourself to have, let's say, great health. Or you must be doing something to yourself to make yourself have poor health. Or success in a project, or failure in a project. So we only have ourselves to blame. That's another aspect of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and it does correlate much to the Schrodinger's equation. So the t main takeaway points are some of the infinite applications. So we got position and momentum of subatomic particles, simultaneous existence, infinite timelines, testing induced error, increased precision equals increased error, uh, proof of placebo effect, absolutely, because remember we have the ratio of the energetic signature to the frequency. Energetic consciousness projection of physical reality. Well, yes and no. Yes, in the long run, not instantaneously, because we live in very saturated density with respect to energy and matter. So you would have to change your consciousness, affirm a mindset, and then do it consistently over a long period of time, and yes, your reality will change. So it's like looking at the brain as the movie projector, the mind, your consciousness, your energetic body as the writer, and then the movie playing around you as physical reality. So you t if you don't like your reality, change your thinking. Your reality is a function of your thinking, which is an energy signature over the function of frequency, which practically is defined as Planck's constant. For then, we take the ratio of Planck's constant to the constant of 4 pi, and this has a less certainty compared to the uncertainty of the position and momentum of those subatomic particles supporting the event. So that means there are variations as well. So we have the energetic consciousness projection of reality, and then we have a practicality and the wave particle duality of light, which really should have been the double slit experiment for which uh, many of you are familiar with, but you take the human conscious observer away from the system and now it's become energetic it's become waves so our physical or i'm sorry our human consciousness as a energetic signature is directly proportional to the physical reality around us so einstein asked a question uh, you know if or he asked a question if, if a tree falls inside of a forest and nobody was there to observe it did it happen well Technically, yes and no, because if nobody was there, then you can't really validate if it, there was even a forest. However, if there were people in the forest and they validated it, it doesn't mean that people who've never seen a forest could validate it. So the answer is yes and no. There's all probabilities are simultaneously existing. And so we have this as proof in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So you can't let something or someone else dictate your reality or your outcomes. You control that. And there are some out there who would not like you to know that because then how would they control you and profit from that business model? So again, you have free will, you have a free choice. Don't let anybody tell you that. And that's why they talk about opinions so much because in the vast totality of probability, going to infinity, positive and negative infinity, technically everything could be an opinion. So if things uh, resonate with you and you like them, then it's probably good for you. And if you don't, no matter how big the hype is, then it's probably not good for you. So use your discretion. But practically, if you run into the Heisenberg uncertainty principle outside of abstractions or abstract applications, 
and let's say you're using the HUP to design a transducer, you could also use this equation relationship with Planck's constant and start perhaps selecting the energetic, the, joule, the energy joules or the frequency as one of your independent variables. From that point on, you have your loose tolerances and then probably the software interface to pick up the probabilities versus the uncertainties. So that's just a suggestion if you've come to this video for other than abstractions, but more concrete uh, engineering design protocols. And so from there, electrically, electronically, you then can have your translation and converting factors for what that is mechanically and thermally, et cetera, like voltages, position, velocity, RPM, et cetera. And um, your current is pressure or it could be torque. It could be the uh, coulombs, the flow, uh, how much mass, uh, electromagnetic or electrical mass, et cetera. We're talking about quantities, in other words. So once you get one, you can get the other very quickly. But Keep mindful of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle because it becomes a very liberating guide to having control of your reality. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.